time to get ready for the Late Show. <laughs> and no, I'm not talking about uh, late night TV. I'm talking about this brand new book by New York Times number one best-selling author Michael Connolly. His last series, Harry Bosch TV series, we'll ask him about that. But Michael joins us right now, and you've been busy, brother, which is good for us. Tell us what it was like writing this book. Oh, it's been um, it's been a good ride, and this this book kind of made it all the more richer. I think uh, I really enjoyed this character. First time I've uh, written as a, a, you know of a woman detective protagonist. Of course, I've written several books that have several women women in it, but this was the first time I um, challenged myself in this way to carry the story uh, with this uh, fierce detective named Renee Ballard. Well, I can tell you from reading it, she's a badass, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, I think she's, you know, in, in detective work, there's people who look at it as a nine-to-five job, and there's people who look at it as a calling, and she's one of those people who feels it's a calling or a mission, and that makes her fierce, it makes her determined, and uh, so, you know, she works the midnight shift or the quote-unquote late show, but, you know, when the sun comes up, she's still working the cases, and that's what I like about her, and hopefully readers will as well. Well, Michael, you've certainly received great acclaim from writing from a feminine perspective in her character, but I'm just wondering how you have been able to get into a woman's mind and how it's played out so well. Well, I got to say, I feel a little sheepish about those accolades because what I had was a real life, um, real live uh, female detective who inspired the whole thing. And she was kind of like almost sitting on my shoulder uh, helping me write this book. Uh, her name is Mitzi Roberts. She's a homicide detective with the LAPD. And she's also a consultant on uh, the show I'm involved with called Bosch, which is based on my other books uh, featuring a male detective. And, uh, you know, we try to make the show, just like my books, as accurate as possible so we have these real live detectives on set and in the writing room. And Mitzi Roberts is one of them, and she previously, to working straight homicide, she worked the, the midnight shift in Hollywood and has told me a lot of stories about it, the, the, the rich variety of kind of cases. Anytime they need a detective, small case or big case, a small case or large case, uh, you roll on it. And uh, that really appealed to me, this idea that um, I could write a whole chapter about a burglary or a missing person all the way up to a murder. And so I started asking her a lot of stories over the last few years and then ultimately culminated in this book. And it's really a cobbling together of anecdotes that came right from Mitzi. And, and uh, so she was kind of my uh, shepherd, even possibly a ghostwriter in a way, uh, along the way. You know, Michael, she certainly sounds like a wonderful woman. And given your star power and status, uh, what allows you, even at this level, not to just go with your gut and still seek out opinions like hers to help your your craft to, to get even better? Uh, you know what? I was a journalist. I was a crime reporter in the late 80s and early 90s. And, you know, I haven't done that in over 20 years. But truth is, you know, when I put my head on the pill and it's just me, I think in my heart and soul I'm still a journalist. And I still employ that um, in the writing of my novels. Uh, so I spend a lot of time with the kind of people I want to write about, whether it's detectives, uh, criminal defense attorneys, uh, a few judges I know I hang out with, and every now and then even criminals. And, you know, so it, to me it's journalism research. It's research by osmosis. I listen to the way they talk, the way they view their world, how they deal with their world and the challenges and, and the bureaucracy, the politics. All that kind of stuff is really important. And I think it's pretty accurate in my books. And so in a way, yes, they're novels, they're fiction, but there's some true stuff in there and there's still some journalism. And uh, that's the way I've always done it. And I guess I'm going to keep doing it that way. Well, I'm glad you've done it because it's certainly the collaboration it continues to work. And uh, thank you for that insight. But you mentioned getting in the minds of uh, even criminals. Have you begun to understand why they do such bad acts? Well, it, to me, it's, it, there's two sides of that. I mean, there's obviously opportunity. There's people who are always looking for the opportunity to, to take an easy way out or to, to grab something, to, to manipulate something in their favor. But then you can get into the more serious and, I think, sociological reasons. And, you know, in this country, there's a deepening gulf between those who have and those who have not. And, you know, and that creates a, a greater desperation. And, you know, in Los Angeles, I think that's possibly more visible than in other cities. Um, it's such a city of heavy media scrutiny and so forth. 
And, uh, you know, and I think in that desperation, there's people who are willing, they become willing to cross lines and to take risks and, and commit crimes. Uh, you know, I mostly write about detectives and, and how they work and the challenges they have. Um, but, it's, but it's always part of that equation is to, to write about the causes. Um, you know, I, have a, I write books about a defense lawyer, and that's also based on real defense lawyers or inspired. And they always say they don't represent criminals. They represent people who made bad choices and, um, and made mistakes. And I think that's always important to, to remember, at least for me when I write these books. Wow, Michael, it's uh, certainly important that we're reminded of this, and thank you for the insight. And I've got to ask about the hit series on TV with your character, Harry Bosch. What's that been like, having this project experience so much success? Um, it's been fun, uh, you know, because been, they've, been they've asked me to be involved. And, um, you know, so I'm there almost every day. Um, I'm involved in the writing process. That's really where I can contribute the most. But, you know, it's a great ego ride to be standing on a set and there's a guy playing the character you created in a room by yourself 25 years ago. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And, uh, and, and what makes it most amazing is the final product, I think, is pretty good. It's, it, they're, um, I think, real-life stories. They really show what the world is like to be a detective, both at home and at work, and the challenges and the risks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, well, we certainly love it, as do the fans. They've been tuning in, and the masses continue to write, brother, because, man, it creates magic, something we all need to escape into from time to time. So before we go, though, given your tremendous success, well-deserved, what has served you well on this journey? I think it, you know, it comes down to work ethic. You know, it's, there's a lot of people who talk about being a writer, but they don't write. You got to be able to put your head down and write. You know, um, you know. I think being a journalist at first has been the key to all my success because in a newsroom, there's no such thing as writer's block. You got to write, and or, or you're gone. And so that's really helped me a lot. Well, we certainly are glad that you personify that and live up to that principle, Michael. Just a pleasure talking to you. It's been a couple of years, but I'm so glad we're reconnected and continued success. Thanks a lot.